Okay, so now we're up to the point where we choose our service account. Now this is kind of interesting because notice that I have to tell SQL Server it can't violate Windows Security. It's going to have to know how does it log into Windows to do what it needs to do in the operating system. And that is exactly what we tell it right here. Notice we can customize for each service account. You'll notice there is a service account for SQL Server and one for SQL Server Agent. We'll talk about Agent later. Or I can just set it for each service. Notice that I can use either a built-in system account or a domain user account. The built-in system account is fine as long as I'm not going to do any kind of networked operation with other machines. Usually I want to use a domain user account. You'll notice I'll have to put in a username, a password, uh, and a domain here. Okay. I'm going to take the system account here to make it easier for us, but normally you will have to type in this information. Notice down here at the bottom which services do I want to start at the end of this setup? SQL Server, the agent, the browser, I'll leave the defaults there and we'll go next. Now the next big one and we'll talk about authentication modes a little bit later on. Which authentication mode do I want to use with this particular installation of SQL Server? I can use Windows or Mixed again we'll cover those later in the course and then if I choose Mixed I can specify the SA logon password. This is a huge security risk. Okay, you don't want to set this blank. You don't want to make it easy. You want to make this an, a really difficult password because this is the number one way SQL Server gets hacked and gets intruded. Collation settings. We can set collation and sort order. For the most part right now we want to leave them alone. Notice we can set them for binary, for case sensitive, for all kinds of things. Notice you have a lot of choices here. We're going to take Latin General, leave it alone. The only thing you need to know here is all your SQL servers running. It's going to be much better if they all have the same collation and sort orders and so forth. And So we're going to leave those alone. So that's where you set those. Notice here's where we can automatically send error reports to Microsoft or to your corporate error reporting server. You can also send feature usage data to Microsoft. I can hear some of you screaming and throwing things at the monitor right now, so I'll just skip this, do whatever you want to with that. So now it says we're ready to install. So I click Install, and it begins the process of performing the install. I'm going to pause the video for a few minutes, and I'll come back and I'll tell you how much time this took, and then uh, we'll take a look at the uh, setup, and then close it out, and I'll show you any other questions that it might pop up. Okay, that took about maybe six minutes, seven minutes on my machine here, which is uh, right at a two gigahertz processor, half a mega RAM, half a giga RAM, I'm sorry. And so notice the components were configured, and so it has now finished the configuration of this, and we click finish, and we are done. We've installed SQL Server. And so now if I go to Start Programs, and you'll notice, I'll notice SQL Server 2005 CTP, and I see all my various choices, which we will start to get into in the next section of videos out there. So as you can see, installation's quite painless uh, once you get past all the requirements, but it's not a really tough thing to pull off by any stretch.